Hey everyone, how's it going? For today's video, let's take an up close and personal, in-depth look at the Ferrari 458 Italia. Throughout the video, we're also going to be covering the 458 Spider, comparing different options as well as configurations, not to mention the key differences between the coupe and the drop-top counterparts. And this is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the 458. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip and go over the performance data, as well as show you a bunch of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. And before we begin, I'd like to extend a big thanks and special shout out to Prestige Imports Lamborghini Miami located in Miami, Florida, Foreign Cars Italia and Ferrari located in Greensboro, North Carolina, and Auto Exotic Rental of Houston, Texas for helping make this video possible. For more information on these respective companies, including exotic inventory and services offered, please feel free to check out their websites provided in the description box below. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. Both of these 458s have some unique options between them. This Rosso Corsa example has pretty much every carbon fiber add-on you can get for the vehicle. The Spider is actually a 2013 model and finished in blue Marabou, a metallic finish, also featuring the beige leather interior but the more comfort oriented seats. It doesn't have quite as many carbon fiber extras as the red one does, so it has extra leather upholstery across the doors and the standard aluminum trim across the dash and center console. In order to start the vehicle, all you have to do is just take the key and go ahead and turn the vehicle's power on. Then just simply put your foot on the brake and hit the red engine start button to go. Direction is provided through rack and pinion steering with speed proportional hydraulic power assistance. The three-spoke leather and carbon fiber steering wheel incorporates all of your primary driving controls, part of Ferrari's human-machine interface approach. It places everything within the driver's immediate reach from the indicators, wipers, lights, and bumpy road setting to the Manitino drive mode selector in the bottom right. The horn buttons are integrated into the upper grip bolsters. In the top of the wheel is an LED light strip that illuminates the proper shifting interval. As with Ferraris of the past, the Manatino automatically adjusts the transmission shift protocols, adaptive magnetological dampers, electronic differential, and F1 track stability system. In its more aggressive settings, the driver has more control and less innervation from the electronic systems, while the opposite for sport and wet mode. Enhancing agility and response is a 30% reduction in the steering ratio, now 11.9 compared to 16.9 in the F430, delivering a more direct steering feel and taking less effort to rotate, lessening the amount you have to reposition your hands through the corners. To either side of the instrument cluster are a pair of LCD displays. The right contains your navigation and entertainment, while the left houses all of your essential vehicle status and driver info features. 
The vehicle dynamic assistance display in the left hand pod offers a snapshot of the 458's operating parameters. VDA is tied with the Manatino settings including race mode, CT off and CST off. CT off which replaces the F430's ice mode disables traction control while maintaining stability, so you can still kick the tail out about 20 to 30 degrees off center before the car governs you back. CST off gives you full control by disabling all stability and traction assist systems. VDA evaluates many of the vehicle systems including the engine, gearbox, tires and brakes, giving you visual confirmation of each component's status based on complex algorithms and data taken from lateral and longitudinal acceleration, overall speed and engine revs. All this sounds complex, but simply put, it allows the driver to assess the vehicle's proper operating conditions. The system also displays three statuses. Warm up indicates the components need to be brought up to operating temperature. Go means the ideal operating conditions have been met, while over indicates the components need to cool down a bit. The 458 delivers its power to the rear wheels through a Getrax 7-speed F1 dual-clutch transaxle, a far quicker and smoother gearbox compared to the F430 6-speed automated manual. No manual transmission is offered. The design allows for independent management of even and odd gears, pre-selected using two separate input shafts. Being that the gears are already prepped for action, there's no delay between the opening and closing phases of the two clutches, eliminating interruptions and torque to the wheels. A similar gearbox is also found in the Ferrari California, only the 458 gains more responsive shift times, not to mention unique gear ratios to match the power and torque from the new V8 out back. Designed for low-end grunt and the ability to hit its top speed in 7th gear. Integrated within the gearbox is an electronic limited slip differential, resulting in a lighter weight, more compact design. In the slender center console is a sculpted aluminum portion that houses the F1 controls. Launch control is engaged by first pressing PS or Partenza Sportivo, sport departure in Italian. R places the vehicle into reverse while auto engages automatic shifting. Of course, by eliminating the column stalks, it makes way for some substantial paddle shifters if you desire to shift it manually. And so, we're going to flip on the automatic LED accent by Xenon projector headlamps, rear fog lamps, and the hazards. Both windows are fully automatic as standard. And we're going to check out the exterior. The Ferrari 458 Italia was first introduced at the 2009 Frankfurt Auto Show for the 2010 model year as the long-awaited replacement for the F430. The all-new mid-engine rear-wheel drive Berlinetta represented a dramatic departure for the brand in regards to styling, technology, and driving performance. The name relates to the V8's 4.5 liters of displacement while Italia pays homage to Italian craftsmanship. Looking at the body, the 458 is primarily made out of a new type of aluminum alloy, which includes parts like the roof, front hood, and doors that meet stiffness standards of just 1mm thick. While the styling differs quite a bit inside and out compared to an F430, the 458 in my eyes is more pleasing to look at. The curves, flared wheel arches, and unmistakable Ferrari charm invites you to study the details, sparking your curiosity of how it all works to create one of the most dynamic Ferraris of its time. Compared to the F430, the 458 is a larger car. Wheelbase stretches by 1.9 inches, leading to an overall length increase by 0.6 inches. The overhangs have been shortened for a tidier package. It's 0.6 inches wider, with the height being the same as its predecessor. The fresh aero-inspired styling drops the drag coefficient from 0.34 to 0.33 and develops 309 pounds of downforce at 124 miles an hour and up to 794 pounds at a top speed of 202 miles an hour. That downforce is split between 41% in front and 59% in the rear. With a curb weight distribution of 42 and 58% respectively, it leads to a pretty dynamically balanced vehicle overall regardless of the speed it's traveling. The aluminum chassis is all new, benefiting from a 15% increase in torsional rigidity and 5% in beam stiffness, thanks to new aluminum alloys and bonding techniques without resulting in adding unnecessary weight. The front clip of the 458 is dominated by a large opening that hides two large air intakes that help channel air to the engine. Dividing each intake are two aeroelastic winglets designed to deflect downward as much as 0.8 inches, helping generate downforce, in addition to further channeling air to the radiators for improved cooling. Right beneath the prancing horse up front is a slender opening that directs air underneath the front end, 
helping channel it across the flat underbody before exiting at the rear diffuser. Each headlight consists of bi-xenon lighting that rotates based on the steering angle illuminating the curves at night. They're adorned with 20 LEDs each for the turn signals and daytime running lamps, the latter of which adjust their intensity based on how bright it is outside. Those small vents that you see at the corner, where the trunk compartment meets the headlamps, passes air under the lamps and through the upper fender mounted vent. It reduces the speed of the air over the front fenders, which significantly reduces lift and adds towards aerodynamic efficiency. Moving towards the rear, situated within each B-pillar behind the rear side glass are the engine intakes. Of course, like its predecessor, you're still able to see the stunning power plant through the glass engine cover. The oil radiators for the gearbox and clutch are located at the rear of the car. Air is fed to them from the two intakes sitting on top of the rear wheel arches. Like the front, aerodynamics do play a big part in the design outback. Everyone knows positive pressure zones naturally develop in the wheel wells. The trick is how to alleviate it at high speeds and reduce lift. In the 458's case, pressure is relieved by engine compartment cooling ducts mounted just ahead of the rear wheel arches in the flat underbody. The air taken in meets with the hot air from the gearbox and clutch radiators and is sent through the rear mesh valences in between the round LED tail lamps. This base bleed effect helps channel air into the car's low pressure tail, blending with air from the huge diffuser and the air coming from around the sides of the car. The three exhaust pipes down below are reminiscent to the ones found in the Ferrari F40. The two outer pipes contain bypass valves that open at certain RPMs to unleash the full sound. The 458 Spider is the world's first mid-rear engine car to feature a patented two-piece power retractable aluminum hardtop that stores under the unique rear deck. Compared to the traditional soft top of the F430, Ferrari claims the new design is 55 pounds or 25 kilograms lighter and far more compact when stowed, allowing for a bit of extra storage space behind the seats. It's also about 88 pounds or 40 kilograms lighter than a conventional hardtop. The two roof panels sit on top of each other just ahead of the engine bay, allowing you to enjoy open air motoring in as little as 14 seconds. Cabin space is even said to improve slightly for taller passengers thanks to the double curvature of the roof. An independently operated rear window can be put up to act as a wind buffeter, said to allow no more conversation between passengers at speeds in excess of 124 miles an hour or 200 kilometers per hour. Compared to the fixed roof Italia, the Spider gains more robust side sills and structural buttresses at the rear for increase in torsional rigidity and stiffness by 23%. Even with the enhancements, weight only grew by about 100 pounds or so. The buttresses are designed to optimize the airflow and provide added rollover protection. Another major change in the body was repositioning of the engine air intakes from within the B-pillar to the rear of the engine amongst the gearbox and clutch radiators. The Spider also receives specially calibrated throttle mapping, suspension damping, and a slightly tuned soundtrack, further enhancing the sound of its 4.5 liter V8. The 458s featured in this video both have asymmetric forged wheels, the blue one having the silver painted alloys while the red one has the diamond cut finish. They measure 20 by 8.5 inches in front and 20 by 10.5 inches in the rear, wrapped in high-performance Pirelli P0 tires, two 3535 and two 9535s respectively. Taming all of that power are standard carbon ceramic cross-drilled and ventilated Brembo disc brakes, saving 20 pounds over conventional brakes. Consisting of 15.7 by 1.4 inch rotors in front and 14.2 by 1.26 inches in the rear, clamped down by 6 piston and 4 piston aluminum calipers respectively. With this setup, the 458 stops from 60 miles an hour at about 107 feet. Added bite is provided thanks to a system that preloads the brakes with abrupt throttle liftoff, reducing the response time and panic stops. As far as the suspension, the 458 features double wishbones in front with lower L arms and a multi-link setup at the rear that boasts a 35% increase in rigidity. The 458 also features a second generation magnetorological shock absorber system, which uses magnetically charged fluid to alter the viscosity within the damper, firming or relaxing almost instantaneously to varying road conditions each millisecond. Compared to its predecessor, first employed in the 599 GTB Fiorano, the new setup brought a revised ECU for a 50% reduction in input time and a forced generation time of 8 milliseconds compared to 15 milliseconds. A new piston rod bushing in the damper further reduces friction by 35% for more precise small bump control and improved ride comfort. Being that the E-Diff and F1 track control software are integrated into the same ECU, they also communicate with each other far better 
integrating actions with one another regardless of which mode that you have the Manatino dial twisted to. This leads to improved torque distribution or torque vectoring out back, coming out of corners which results in a 32% increase in longitudinal acceleration out of corners compared to the previous system, not to mention 28% less counter steering. The 458 is even set to lap Ferrari's Fiorano test circuit in just 1 minute 25 seconds which is about Enzo level. Overall length is 178.2 inches with a width of 76.3 inches and a height of 47.8 inches riding on a 104.3 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight depending on how equipped is between 3200 and 3300 pounds or so. So let's go ahead and pop the engine cover. The 458 is powered by an all aluminum 90 degree 4.5 liter mid rear mounted V8. Featuring a traditional flat plane crankshaft, double overhead cams, 4 valves per cylinder, direct injection and dual variable valve timing, this award winning rev happy power plant boasts a lofty 12.5 to 1 compression ratio and a red line of 9000 RPM. The new generation of naturally aspirated V8 engine also shares a few elements with the 4.3 liter mills found in the F430 in California, such as bore centers and basic block configuration, but that's basically where the similarities end. At the time of its debut, it set an entirely new benchmark for its segment and for Ferrari. It's also a far more efficient power plant, not only in fuel consumption, but the way it delivers and releases its power. Improved air delivery, reduced pumping losses, and a substantial reduction in internal friction help harness every pony possible. It develops 562 horsepower at 9,000 RPM and 398 pound-feet of torque at 6,000 RPM. That's an impressive 125 horsepower per liter with an equally impressive torque ratio. Ferrari claimed this was a record for a non-turbo production engine at launch. 80% of the peak torque is available at 3250 RPM. This means the 458 is able to accelerate to 62 miles an hour in less than 3.4 seconds and hit 124 miles an hour in 10.4 seconds, all the way to its top speed of 202 miles an hour. As far as fuel economy, the 458 carries a 22.7 gallon tank and requires premium gas. EPA estimates range between 13 miles to a gallon in the city and 17 on the highway, representing a 13% improvement over the F430, class leading in both consumption and emissions. The interior of the 458 combines some of the most aggressive and artful design elements of its segment. Compared to the F430, it boasts numerous advancements in quality, ergonomics, technology, and long-term comfort. With that human-machine interface like we talked about earlier, all of the essential driving functions of the vehicle are centered around the driver, which makes it a pretty cool cockpit feel. Everything that you see is wrapped only in the highest grades of leather or Alcantara, available in numerous colors and two-tone combinations, not to mention the option of accent stitching in the leatherwork. This red example features just about every carbon fiber add-on available covering the doors, dash, and center console. For further customization, you can choose between four different seat styles, including these top-spec carbon fiber racing seats, available in three sizes to fit a wide variety of body types. This one also has the Daytona leather inserts and contrasting black. As expected, attention to detail is phenomenal, from the way the stitching highlights the bolsters to the prancing horse embossed in the top of the fixed headrest. They're definitely on the firm side, but provide a great level of support laterally and for your sides. More comfort-oriented seats are standard that also benefit from full power adjustment, adjustable lateral support, and heat for cold days. Continuing through the interior, down below in the entry threshold, you have a standard aluminum entry guard. You can't opt for it to have it in carbon fiber just like the red one featured in this video. Soft plush carpeting, leather-lined central tunnel, and aluminum drilled sport pedals. This steering wheel has the optional power tilt telescoping feature while it comes standard as manual. Of course, the leather wrap dash encompasses your lighting, power mirrors, your driver information system, and so much more. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. Yeah. <laughs> 
8 comes standard with an 11 speaker JBL professional audio system pumping out 640 watts through a digital sound processing amplifier. The leather lined headliner flows into the 8 pillars. Leather also lines the outside of your visor, whereas the inside is soft Alcantara. The rear view mirror is auto dimming. It has three position garage home link located via those buttons right there. As far as the top stack, it houses the microphones for your hands-free Bluetooth telephone, interior lighting and reading lamps, and lock and unlock. Not to mention a little bit of ambient illumination. The lower portion of the dash is completely wrapped in leather, and down beneath houses your standard dual zone automatic climate control system with independent temperature as well as zone adjustments for each passenger. Fan speed in the middle, recycling, front and rear defrost, and one touch AC. Continuing back across the leather and carbon fiber center console, you do have two subtle cup holders towards the front lined in velour. The carbon fiber coming around the gear selector controls as well as the window switches, the Ferrari logo in the middle must have padded housing, and a little storage tray in the back with a 12 volt power outlet and your electronic actuator for the glove box. Even the seat belt connectors are wrapped in leather. Pretty much all of the vehicle's electronic features, including the vehicle dynamic systems, mobile media and entertainment, is all routed through these two control pods that correspond to the two LCD screens on either side of the tachometer. The right hand side corresponds to your mobile media, telephone and navigation systems while the left hand side is your driver info system, status gauges, and the vehicle dynamic systems. So the functions are all routed through this little controller right here, where you can rotate it left and right for different options and so forth, or click up, down, left and right, push in to select an option, and the up, down, left and right correspond to the different quadrants here. So if we click it to the right, it brings us to our media screen. Right now we're on the vehicle's six disc CD player. It's also a hard drive based system so you can load up MP3 files, not to mention USB iPod integration and hands-free Bluetooth streaming of audio. Whichever menu you're in, media, radio, so on and so forth, if you hit the menu button right here or setup, it brings you some detailed settings for the audio system. Back button, your hands-free telephone in the bottom, it'll list paired Bluetooth devices unless one hasn't been paired already. Not to mention your radio with standard satellite radio, different presets, and again the radio settings. There's also real-time traffic updates to the Sirius satellite radio. Pit speed right here actually corresponds to your cruise control. These buttons correspond to the different quadrants, and you have an OK button instead of the rotary wheel on the right hand side. Main menu, which is right here, and a shortcut key to the vehicle dynamic system, and I'll show that in just a second. Setup is all of your personalizable options, again using the arrows to go back and forth. Hit OK to make a selection, and go between the different submenu. Hit the left hand side arrow to go back. Trip computer. Various status gauges. If you don't already have the speedometer on the right hand side, you can bring it up in this screen. 
So if the radio is off, you'll just have your status gauges to the left and then the speedometer off to the right. And then go into the different screens with the left and right arrows. Water temperature, oil temperature, voltometer, oil pressure, tire pressure monitoring system as well as temperature. So VDA is tied to the Manatino switch modes and it shows you which systems are affected relative to the mode that you're in. The stability control system as well as lap timers for a little bit of track data. Alrighty. We'll go ahead and shut her down. And we'll check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? The passenger seat also features the same manual adjustments like you find on the driver's side. Like I said earlier, to open up the glove box, you just hit the little open button in the center console. It's modest space overall with felt lining. Your CD player is also located in there, as is your USB and iPod connection. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at this 2014 Ferrari 458 Italia. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.